Hello, and welcome to my channel where we may be dazed, but we are not confused. This is a stargazer reading for the sign of Sagittarius. So the purpose of this reading is to take a look at what you can do to become more closely aligned with your star that shines brightly within you. We are going to be using the Mystical Shaman Oracle, and so let's take a look. So the story of the wound that you have that might be older, that might be kind of holding you back or causing you some grief is that of feeling as if you could be your most authentic and free person. I feel like you may have tried to show up this way and you may have experienced some um, blowback for it. Perhaps, you know, people try to check you or, you know, let you know your station in life or let you know who you were, or put you in your place because you showed up as a person that was not really worried about cultural conformity or social constraints. And you actually were trying to show up in your truest self. So, so you were actually doing what the purpose of this reading was like you were connected to that or, um, you know, or it could be that you felt like you couldn't do that. Like you were never able to do that. But looking at your cards overall, I feel like this is a person who is very much in this energy, who very much would like to be even more free and authentic than what they already are. Um, I feel like this is a person who shows up fully in life, a person who tries to be who they are unapologetically they let their light shine brightly rarely allow another person to come in and try to dim their light not really worried about the consequences however with this being in the position of wounding I feel as if you may have received a lot of blowback because of that and you've become kind of like a warrior where you stand up and you're you aggressively have people stand down and you don't allow people to come try to take your shine. So this is different from what I've been getting in that you are a person who is quick to come at someone that you perceive is trying to restrict you from showing up in your truest way in any way. So this could be like if you have family members or, you know, some random person that comments on something that you did that wasn't really the most um, conforming thing, you would be really quick to retort back with something sassy or cut them back down or give people a piece of your mind and people back off. That's what I pick up with this is that people do back off and they let you do what you want. And I feel like you would be the kind of person that you do exactly what you want. You show up the way you want. And I'm seeing, this is funny because I, the next card is the Jaguar card and I just see like a jungle and it's like when you're coming, it's like the trees part and it's like you hear like the foot steps and you don't know what's coming but you know something's coming through and it's like boom the earth is shaking and the trees are parting and people have to they try to run and get out the way and then you come out and you're like you know five feet tall or whatever but you know people know they see you before you're before they see you coming before you get there they hear your footsteps before they see you step in like you have a presence about you that's so outside of the norm and so nonconformist and very much um, almost anti-authoritarian and very free so much so that people naturally kind of will um, lean towards you as a leader because of that because many people are not comfortable and being in that energy and are trained that that's the leaders that are the most, the loudest and the, the biggest and the most powerful and the strongest are the ones that you follow. I don't feel like you're, you necessarily try to take advantage of people in the form of trying to push your will on others or force people to do what you want. I feel like you do that for yourself. 
And just the act of you doing that for yourself and the energy of that is enough to project out leader qualities. And it makes people want to fall in line with whatever you're doing if they're not consciously aware of who they are and consciously trying to create and take actions that are in alignment with who they are. So the, so, so this reading is going to be more so about how to get yourself more in alignment with who you are, because I feel like you've in the physical, you had this down, but at some level, um, maybe in the spiritual, like there's something, there's another aspect, another layer of this that wants to be more in alignment. And the story that we have here that you can release so that you can write a new story that puts you more closely in alignment is the story of needing to let go of any baggage or anything that has caused you to maybe not show up in your fullest way. So I'm picking up, it could be like this fear that you have that if you allow yourself to relax or if you are not outwardly projecting how strong you are or how opinionated or how non-conformist you are or how much you don't give a flip about what people have to say about you, that someone will try to take advantage of you. So I'm, I'm almost picking up that this could be a defense mechanism to make people stand down from you. So this card, the Jaguar, is important because, you know, with that image I had of you kind of parting through the jungle and people see you and they respect you before they even actually come into contact with you, the Jaguar is supposed to be the protector of all life in the Amazon. And it's a sign of courage and, and certainty in the face of fear. And so I feel like you may have been surrounded with a lot of fearful situations or an experience of deep, profound fear has triggered you to come into this energy as a way of standing up for yourself and getting through these types of circumstances. Um, you know, the Jaguar is at the top of the food chain, so nobody comes after it. It's never prey. Um, it's able to um, track its prey and not be seen. It's able to just kind of enjoy its life without any real threat. It can um, eat what it wants and it doesn't have to worry about being eaten because nobody will bother it. And it's just fearless and at ease. And so you might be you might be showing up in that way where you're very comfortable and you're just, you know, you're at the top of the food chain and you're just... Um, you know, if anybody were to try to come to you, like you're, you know, first of all, nobody would, because like I said, you're at the top of this food chain. Um, so nobody even tries to restrict your, your, your freedoms or your sense of trying to be who it is that you see yourself to be. And this Jaguar is also capable of kind of toting the line between the light and the shadows and night and day kind of going back and forth so you might be a person that can kind of you're very comfortable and in touch with all these different aspects of yourself so you can you can show up however you want to show up you can be the super kind whatever person or you can get real you know snatch somebody up really quickly you know whatever the situation dictates, like that's how you're able to do. But what the story is that you're being asked to kind of let go of is in order to write a story that's more in alignment with who you would like to be, is this sense of being able to let go of the need to allow fear, the fear of being overtaken or the fear of the, not so much the fear of being overtaken, the fear of being perceived as a person who can be overtaken to cause you to um, not want to walk away from kind of being in the shadows and kind of playing with the shadows and, you know, mastering these games that you might unconsciously be playing that border on, you know, I don't want to say manipulation, but just, I feel like you're very comfortable in dealing with these different aspects that people might exhibit in the more unhealthy ways of interacting with people. And I feel as if you 
might feel comfortable being in toxic relationships or you might be attracting those to yourself because you feel so confident in and like I said you're at the top of the food chain so no matter what um most people and you know this is kind of unfortunate but sometimes the people who are predatory and I feel like this isn't so much being directed at you but there's an aspect of this that does apply perhaps but people who are preying on people they tend to do that to the people who are weaker than them and so you might attract people who actually have predatory natures but they respect you and they don't try that with you because they don't perceive you as being someone who is either insecure or not able to stand up for yourself or you don't know who you are or there's space for them to play these games with you mental games or manipulation games and so they might be attracted to that sense of inner power that you have and while they might treat others very poorly they don't do that to you but you're aware of the personality styles that they have and the and the types of things and it like you you're in a very comfortable place where you can be in and out of the shadows without this fear of a, another predator coming after you and so this is kind of saying that this letting go of the need to engage in those types of relationships where you know as long as you're perceived as the top predator you don't have to worry but the minute that you give off the faintest scent or the faintest signal that you are not that that you have to watch your back letting go of that would allow you to write a story that's more in alignment with the type of inner power and the type of person and respect that you want to receive as a person that's fully expressing who they are and not conforming to what others tell them to be. I feel like you want to be more authentically authentic. Okay. So the wisdom that you can acquire to help with this is to not be so quick to f look for the shadows, you know, like we said before, find the shadows in others and seek to kind of cut it down to find enemies in others or to make enemies and kind of create this, you know, me versus them. They're here to kind of, you know, step in my space or to try to, you know, try to exert their power and influence over me. It's almost like a power not a power gain, but like this exchange of power and trying to check one another. And this is saying that you might have been tempted to kind of follow your lower instincts to, um, to kind of track and, and prey on other predators. And you might've felt comfortable doing it because they were predatory themselves. So maybe that was like the sense of it's not really wrong if these people are predators themselves and they're treating people like this. I don't treat these people, just the people who do have shadow. Like I play shadow games with my shadow and the shadows of others, not so much with other people who I perceive as being not as strong as me in other ways. Okay. So I feel like this is saying that the wisdom you can acquire is to not assume that your enemy is who you think it is, to not be so quick to find fights or to quarrel with people, to not be pulled into situations that are triggered from a place of anger and that ends up kind of hurting your relationships. Because if you have the energy where, you know, people can see the trees parting and hear you stomping before you come in, that's kind of an intimidating energy because you don't know if it's going to be like this massive, you know, 10 foot, maybe 20 or 30 foot, you know, monster thing that's coming out or a tank or like what's coming out of these trees. And then it's a person. And then there's this sense of like, oh, well, if this person has this much, you know, energy, this intimidation energy around them, then I should be careful. And I feel like that could be harming your relationships and putting you into an energy where you're only attracting people who have this we're operating out of the shadows. And so that's putting you into a space where th those are the kind of experiences that you're having. All right. Mostly and needing to kind of leave 
behind a bit so that you can shift this energy in a more healing and affirmative way for yourself. All right. This is saying that it would be helpful to find ways to look for, to feed, you know, if you have two wolves within you, feed the one that's going to be wanting an instinct for peace rather than that instinct to try to, you know, be in the jungle and find who's trying to, you know, who's going to get step up and meet me today or, you know, that kind of thing. Being, it's like being the, the king or the queen of the jungle while also being a peaceful person, a person who is that because their first instinct is peace, not war. And they still have respect for themselves and they still are passionate about who they are and will stand up fully for themselves and for others if need be and are not easily pushed around or manipulated or cajoled into being what they are not and going against their soul, selling themselves out. You can do that without the intimidation tactics and the aggression that can hurt your positive relationships with others and it also can put a bad taste in people's mouth and kind of teach people that you know to be a nice person and to be well liked then I have to sacrifice myself or I have to not be who I am or not respect my boundaries you know because that could be in some weird way reinforcing the ideas that not having boundaries and not respecting yourself not showing up fully for who you are and being um conformist is going to get people to like you more or make you somehow more adaptable for relationships in social re relationships and so kind of teaching where whereas you might think that it's teaching people by example it might be doing the opposite at some level okay so your outcome should you put your energy into making some of these shifts is that you'll be able to get some perspective on the bigger picture of your life all right you'll be able to see yourself face to face with how you're connecting to everything right now I feel like you're very you know this image I have of this jaguar being like the the king or queen of the jungle the top of the food chain in charge of all life forms at the top of the circle of life here there could be a sense of isolation right, where you're not able to connect and you might feel stuck or stagnant like you're not really there's nowhere to go from here you might not see um see the bigger picture but this allows you to kind of see your own flaws and what your potentials and opportunities are beyond this like if you connect with others and in order to connect with others i feel like you're needing to connect with yourself to allow yourself to connect with spirit so that you can connect with the divine spirit within all people around you and you might be very busy you might have a lot going on that blocks you from having the time to do that um but when you are able to take some time and just sit with yourself um and allow yourself to connect because i feel like in a lot of this energy of trying to stand out and be your own person um, it's, it's coming from a place not of connecting to spirit and then letting that energy flow through you. It's almost like disconnecting yourself and being, you know, I don't want to not puffing yourself up, but there's certain like in nature, there's certain animals that they can increase their size by two or three times to make themselves more intimidating than they might actually be. And I feel like if you allow yourself in the silence and solitude in the peace of when you're alone with yourself to sit with who you are outside of needing to stand apart from others and make sure people know that you are standing apart from them and that you're not taking any of their mess and that you're not going to just do what people say just to do it and so on it will allow you to connect more deeply and authentically with what it is and who you are from a space of love and acceptance for yourself and respect for yourself and not from a, a fear of someone coming and trying to restrict that from you. And then it will project outwardly as, you know, self-love, self-care, a sense of also being able to show kindness and 
understanding and compassion towards others because you're able to show that towards yourself because you ultimately do truly, truly respect and care about who it is that you are internally so that it can more clearly shine through. All right. So I feel like that's what it's basically saying is that if you can connect, allow yourself some time to connect with spirit, then you can kind of turn that light up a little bit so that it shines more brightly because you've already set the the stage and the foundation to allow that to, to shine through in your material, physical life. And now it's just reconnecting as much as you can with it so it can shine all the way through. All right. So Sagittarius, that is what I have for your reading. Um, for this stargazer look at what you can do to be more in connection with your soul i hope this was helpful for you thank you for joining me on this channel where we may be days but we are not confused and until the next video bye bye